Welcome to Perceptions Today podcast, where we discuss consciousness in all forms. June 2022, episode 31, Eileen Meyer joins us in a roundtable about Kundalini and Life, part 3 of 3. Eileen Meyer is a mystic poet, songstress, author with experiences in Kundalini, lucid dreaming, OBEs, Mayan wisdom, 5-MEO DMT and much more. Participants knew it was being recorded. I can, some people call it manipulating, I call it inspiration motivation um i survived two deadly illnesses and i love life i love children but especially even though it's bs what you're teaching it's being together what can we do we're a team oh my god you guys are the future one day can i have your you know your mobile number because in 10 years you're going to be president and i'm going to call you and ask you for a favor, etc. So those kinds of, um, I, I have it, I do have it in me. But my mom who passed away, she told me, you have a shining star. But she said, you have a presence. And she said, and that positive energy is turned back to you in a negative way. And that's why you're always ill. Does that make sense? Make, make any sense, Eileen? I I don't um, necessarily. She was like, stay under the radar. Stay, yeah. Just shut up and stay under the radar. That well, that was. Yeah. Um, I think you were more nail on the head uh, earlier in the way you described yourself. I'm not thinking of it right now. You, it was like, I feel the energy when people talk. It's like they, they move in and out of their truth. And um, it's like a, you know, it's like Mike's poem, you know, about the waters, um, the ocean. It's like it, it just kind of flows in and out and around us and through us. And sometimes we um, engage with it and we light up and we're able to um, radiate that out to the environment around us. But as far as your illness goes, um this is this is your going within time and, and you articulated that very well earlier that you understood that this you know whenever you got um out of alignment with your authentic self your you know your own genuineness um then you would get sick i noticed that pattern in my life as well lifer so that's why i paid particular attention to that so you're flowing in and out of this and it's and back again to that's okay. Forgive yourself and, and then read and then correct it. But the greatest thing, it's wonderful to hear that your mother saw and felt and knew about your gift of presence. Um, the other things that you can do around students are say, you know what excites me? You know what I love, you know, and, and just put it in terms of your own joy and wonder right? Because kids are going to come any age, not just kids, um, are going to, are, are going to notice that frequency. You know, it's like, whoa, she has joy. She has wonder. And, you know, I, I, I have wonder sometimes too. I want to hear about her wonder. So this is how, this is how we can teach um, beyond the, the given curriculum until that is changed by all of us stepping forward and being genuine. Right, because that's going to shatter this reality. It's going to break the spell. You're going to see a lot of transformation, a lot of shifting and changing, because these institutions no longer represent us because we are changing. We are no longer fragments that are lost and saying, Oh, please help us. Oh, I'm a victim. Oh, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm unemployed now. I can't get a job in your system. Can I have, can I have, you know, a few coins sent my way and, you know, and, or, or um, here's how you get rich, you know, and here's how you win and the system and play the game. And, you know, no, none of it. I want none of it. Um, I'm all about meeting all of you and finding out what our gifts are and how we, we create this way forward. Um, and that if we do have leadership, um, it's, it's people that are like us and know who they are. They know themselves. They know about frequency. They know about balance. 
They know about the music of the universe. They know about source. These people don't. Uh, maybe a few are embedded here and there um, that are doing good works that we can't see or we, you know, we don't hear about on the news. But this is how, this is how we demonstrate by being who we are as fully as possible and as boldly as possible now. That's the greatest service that we have to offer. There's a high five. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. And I wanted to kind of piggyback and just echo what uh, Imaginal was saying um, about kids and their potential. Once they, I mean, you, and I feel like Ifor already knows this. Uh, if you just give them attention to their passion, um, then their gift, they're going to, they're going to resonate with what like brings them, um, they, they know their gifts and what like holds their attention. So I feel like if you encourage their passion, um, that can coexist within school and it'll be, it's like teach. Yeah. You got, you get it. Sorry. I, I'm kind of nervous right now, um, but I just oh, wanted don't to worry, like, Marcel. It's okay. We give everyone the opportunity to talk as you see within the room, we tend to get the hands up and then we make sure that everyone has the opportunity to continue talking quite happily and they get the opportunity to go forward quite nicely. So yeah, take your time, take a breath. For sure. Yeah. I just wanted to say um, with kids and, empowering them uh remind them of their passion and then they'll excel with whatever gifts they already have that's an excellent excellent point thank you i think you've got your hand up gray beard yeah i i want to uh, thank you i wanted to do a triple uh piggyback on that for i for um yeah myself uh, i'm not a licensed teacher uh but i homeschool my children and have for four years and i'm very involved with children um, in general, uh, in my North American friends here will, would recognize Cub Scouts and things like that. Um, what I have learned, uh, you know, for my own children, I, I can express whatever, you know, I would like, and I, I can be quite direct with them with certain beliefs, but with other people's children, it, it, um, it, it's my strong opinion that it's not your place. Um, so, you know, what I personally do with them is I lead by example. Um, I, I lead them to positivity or positive viewpoints or just uh, in a, an unconditional caring or love in general. Um, so, you know, if I have a child that, you know, that, that's being negative, I'll, I'll turn it to the positive viewpoint of it and, and just leading by example. And, and, and if you just condition that the, the caring of it all, it, they'll eventually grow up into those type of adults. You know, you're, you're only guiding them in that way, but to be really direct to teach, to tell them what's going on in the world, quote unquote, uh, I feel that's, uh, especially with younger children, that's just not maybe our place, uh, you know, unless anyone disagrees. Totally agree, Greybeard. And I was talking about university students. So those are, I mean, still, I do not talk directly about these kind of stuff, but um, it's usually children are affected of what you do instead of what you say so after 50 minutes of teaching i sometimes stand in the doorway and i'm like okay ahmed what did i talk about what yo yifra wallahi billahi you talked about beautiful stuff but i don't remember what so long story short it's the energy that stays eileen uh, maybe you can uh, explain why it's the experience they remember, the positivity, and what they do with it is their thing. But for example, I never talk about my um, uh, my parents. They always ask, "What's your religion?" or "Where do you come from?" etc. Try to be as neutral as possible, but still, you're like, if I can just, you know, reach out several of these beautiful souls and direct them into what I call the the true light and sometimes i even encourage them to to go in politics we need people new people beautiful minds who can maybe just turn around what is corrupt and going wrong and um help us focus back on our true selves well how come we're not teaching how to cook and we're teaching them mathematics and and biology after a test not even a, an hour, 50, minute late, 50 minutes later, they don't even remember the content of the test. So what are we teaching anyway? But a beautiful speech, Paul, I'm going to be with you anyway, but a beautiful speech, they don't remember the words, but the feeling. So Greybeard, 
Thank you very much. I'm also very careful with what I, what I say, especially in Holland. We have very, you know, heavy laws um, that we have to be, be, you know, but it's the way I behave. Some, you know, one one instructor, I I had to work in, in Turkey for six years, but there is this, um, what I saw in Turkey was especially the difference between us being brought up here in the West and them is these algorithms. That's what I want to call the religion and the culture that has put a frame around them. I, I one day towards the end of my six years and I had decided to return back to Holland because I was seen as an agent working for Holland and not as a Turk. Can you, can you imagine that not being Turkish? Anyway, so I asked a colleague, I said, how come you guys never accepted me as a Turkish teacher? My parents are Turkish. I mean, the Dutch don't accept me as Dutch, but he said, well, let me tell you, there are two reasons. One, you're too positive. I mean, God damn it, you had cancer and still you would show up to teach. We hate people who are happy. It's the positivity. It's it's venomous, right? And the second thing is, it's the perception that you have about us that, you know, the, the this, this need to be feeling, children have that as well, to be a part of a larger group. But you are beautiful as you are as an individual. It did have an impact, but I still can't put it into a, a frame as a teacher. I, I don't know, Graybeard, can you follow what I'm saying? Eileen, maybe you want to, you know, help me or Paul? Did I make any sense? Um, I, I'll respond. Um, Eifer, thank you. Um, and Graybeard did have some some excellent, pragmatic, um, very clear points um, about education um, and being a group leader. I, Eifer, uh, children and uh, are closer to as we were talking earlier, cl uh, closer to uh, the natural state. And again, uh, we as um, programmed <laughs> beings um, over not only this lifetime, but uh, through our uh, many uh, generations uh, of programming, um, that we, come, we still come in as children and then uh, we quickly are, fall back in to, the, to the, the militant march you know, of this reality. That's just what happens. Um, but we don't have to, at a certain point, we won't have to teach <laughs> uh, in the ways that we have in the past. We just um, will fill each other in, right, with, the, with these waters, with this ocean, um, with love, with resonance. And um, then, then we grow and expand and play with that, right? So that's what we're moving into, and, and, and that's really something... And these are the things that I dream about. These are my dreams um, where it's not things that are happening right now. Like I wake up and this thing happened. It's mine are the future or what we're moving into and all the potentiality of where we're going, what, what, what we have available to us. And this is what's happening right now um, in, in that we, we, we have a tendency to think that we're just going to keep going based on the way it's always worked before. But the way I translate it from this intelligence is it's, it's not, it's like um, it, everything will just shift or flip. And you're just like, Whoa, do you remember? Or I had a dream that, that we lived in this really weird world and it was like everybody um, was pretending to be something they're not and they had to follow all these weird rules. I'm not saying it's exactly like that. I'm saying it's more like that. Once we restore our natural state, we won't keep using the same systems, all the systems. Uh, we won't hardly even need systems because we're unified. We're, we're in harmony with each other. So, how we live and move into the next um, iteration or however you want to say it is 100% up to us and how we want to 
create and play and teach and guide um we won't we will not be trapped in these in these old systems um and that's that's the power that each and every one of us have to contribute to this so be who you are be who you are as fully as possible and that's the greatest thing we can do for each other at this time thank you eileen you're welcome I was just going to say about how to give information. When it comes down to topics like the ones that we tend to discuss, because I don't always have enough time to talk to people and to find the baseline, I always find somebody else's work which has got good content that I can point people to. And then they can either go, oh, don't like this after five minutes, or they can come back and go, I know a lot more about this. Do you want to know about this? Or do you know any more about another subject? And then we start swapping, which is how all this is basically continued and started. So it's not always you having to be the one providing it as the source so that you're not the complete focus, but you can be the focus of sending people, sending them towards it. Then they can make their own decision up. Then it's nothing to be reflected back on yourself and becoming a problem in an uh, educational kind of way, if that makes sense, which I think I've just run around in circles. Well, that makes sense to me, Paul. Yeah. That's good, because I thought the mic had gone, and I thought that was it. I was all completely <laughs> void again, and you were all speaking about me. Greybeard? Yeah, just to go further on what Afer was saying, um, if I'm understanding correctly, I, I think she's – are you saying that – you feel almost like you're not doing enough. Like you, you want to inspire and do more with these children and help them. But like just being positive, isn't enough or, or um, I'm understanding that correctly. Um, I, th I think I used to, I used to see it like that too. Uh, and then I realized that I, di I didn't need to, I didn't need to be the savior necessarily. Um, you, you know, I love working with the kids, but I think just showing them the light, just showing them the positivity was enough. Yeah, and it took me a while to realize that because, you know, and I had to reflect back on my own life, like the, the teachers and the mentors that I remember were the extremely positive or the extremely negative. Both of them had effects on me, but those are the ones I remember. I don't remember the vanilla, you know, regular teachers very much at all. I remember the very nice ones and the very bad ones. And they, they led me down the path that I'm on now because I wanted to be like the nice ones. Um, and, and I feel like that's what I do now with the children as well. So I just try to show them by example, how I want to act and how I want to be. And I, I just hope that that inspires them because then I feel that's enough to lead them down the path, the right, the correct path anyways. Cool. I think you're next in line for chat. Oh, no, you obviously didn't hear me respond prior, and <laughs> you can now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I wish there was a question mark emoji here, so <laughs> when you make comments like that, I can just go question mark, question mark, what? <laughs> it's okay, I'm watching messages come from other directions. So I think it is fantastic, obviously, the types of advancements we've made with different parts of the conversation where it's all connecting into information and understanding how that relays. It doesn't have to always be correct and good now. It's going to be a wave of it coming through. You have that kind of sine wave rather than Everest kind of peaks and troughs, if that makes sense, Reginald. Yeah, I liked what Greybeard um, had to share. I think we, we just do our best, um, right, in any given moment and um, – show up in the greatest way that we possibly can in the most authentic way um, in, in, in the circumstances uh, that we're in, um, trusting that, that this music is permeating um, in just the simplest of things, right? The simplest of words. Um, it's more about your tone and your, just your relaxed, centered, balanced presence that has um that speaks volumes let's say far more far more than what can be spoken and articulated um inside these um inside the matrix if you will i'm uh, having trouble with my phone um 
it's charging at the moment, but it, then it all of a sudden it stops and I can't get it reconnected. I don't know why that is. So I may end up dropping out unexpectedly. Well, before you do, I wanted to say that you are 100% correct with the tones and stuff. Um, uh, your tone, the way you talk and the way you um, give your feedback and stuff. I get goosebumps every time you talk. <laughs> um you're you're just so inspirational to me and I appreciate you and I feel like with the teaching thing that we were just talking about um y'all are my teachers um I see you guys as my teachers you guys are teaching me more than I um did know you guys are teaching me that I'm not alone um just being there and being 100% about yourself, that is a way of teaching. Um, the teaching your children. Um, I am not a homeschooler. My, uh, my children go to regular school, but at the same time, I try to make sure my kids know all that they need to know <clears throat> that I know, you know, just uh, be yourself you know don't don't hide yourself from them and teach them that they can be themselves and that they don't have to hide because like we were talking about earlier the truths and then being told that we can't tell the truth um i will never tell my children that you know they're wrong or i will never tell my children that um they need to hide themselves i always uh my daughter she's <laughs> i was told from my daughter's very, very young age, like she was baby, baby, still in the bottle type thing. Um, a, a woman I've never met before. I've never seen her in my life. Walked up to me while I was at a motel. <clears throat> I was outside smoking a cigarette. And my mom had come out after um, the woman approached me and said, do you have a gift? Like, do you, you, you see things others can't, don't you? And I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> how would you know? She's like, I can feel it off of you. I can see that. She said, and it's powerful. She said, you help a lot of people, don't you? I say, I, I try to. And my mom comes walking out holding my daughter. And she said, oh, this must be your mom because she's got it in her too. And my mom kind of looks at me questionable. I was like, yeah, she, she sees things that others can't sometimes too. And then she looks down at my daughter and she said, oh, my God. She said, she is so powerful with it. She has got this gift that the both of you have and it's radiating off of her so magnificently she said you need a teacher from a young age and I kid you not I, tears came to my eyes whenever she said that because like uh me and my gifts like I said I I was told not to say anything about them from a young age so for her to say that it really brought to my attention you know I shouldn't keep this for my children you know I shouldn't tell my kids that that you know that is their imagination. You know what I mean? And my daughter, um, I can see the light in people. Uh, if they have any type of light whatsoever, um, I see darkness and light. I see the light more than I do the dark type thing. Um, I know people uh, just by looking at them, I guess, feeling them, you know, the vibrations that they give. My daughter, um, quick story, my daughter had we was at my friend's house and her neighbor's son was over playing with her kids. His mom's girl or his mom's uh, boyfriend had came over to pick him up, to take him back home. And I, I instantly had a weird feeling, but I wasn't trying to say anything. My daughter, she's just learning how to walk at this point. She uh, was, you know, trying to walk down the hall and stuff and laughing and smiling. And she takes one look at this man and she stops and she, she looks at him and like questionably and I could see the fear in her eyes a little bit and she takes like one or two steps closer towards him and kind of leans down and looks up because he's leaning down putting his coat uh putting the kid's coat on him you know and she is trying to look him in the eyes I guess and he looks up at her and he says hi and she starts screaming and crying like terrified um it was almost as if he had hurt her, you know? And so I picked her up and I walked into the bathroom and I shut the bathroom door and we stayed in the bathroom until the dude was gone. And my friend, she comes in the bathroom and she's like, Oh, she must, you know, just not like new people. I said, no. Um, 
she does not do that. She loves people. She, she, I have to, I'm scared to tell her it's okay to walk up to random people because, you know, she's that loving of people that she, I'm scared she's going to get kidnapped, <laughs> you know, but, uh, she's, she's never acted like that towards somebody. Um, I said, Nina, be careful around this man. I said, I got the feeling too, but I didn't know that my daughter would feel the same thing. A week later, the dude got carried away in handcuffs um, because he was beaten on his girlfriend. And he was being drugged to the police car in handcuffs, yelling at this woman, saying that he was going to get out and he was going to come find her and her son and kill them. And I looked at Nina whenever she told me that and I said, tell me my daughter didn't fucking see something that we didn't see or that you didn't see, you know. I said, I told you, be careful. My daughter seen it even and she's not even a year old <laughs> i got goosebumps all over my body trying to tell you guys this like i will never forget that and with that woman telling me whenever you know she was still a baby baby to teach her from a young age that made so much more sense at that point point. and so whenever my daughter has a feeling i always make sure i pay attention to it i she is a very smart child she's three i know some of y'all heard her talking yesterday uh she's in the bath right now <laughs> but she is she's good with her words and so she will tell you how she feels um and i i pay attention i make sure to pay attention and i make sure to tell her you know tell me if you've got weird feelings yada yada um and she'll tell me and i pay attention but yeah that was my story and wanted to it goes along with the vibrations and the vibes and how you talk and stuff so Oh, definitely. That is an amazing story. I'm going to get back to sensitive awareness, but just for your own kind of benefit, Ashley, in when we're doing these kind of environments, we keep the language kind of on the friendly, family friendly routine. I'm so sorry. I really am. It's so, okay. As I said to a few people, you get two bites <laughs> of the cherry. Um, Ashley, I can, I can totally relate to um, what you're saying in your experiences. Cause I, I used to also approach my mother when I was a young child and say, Oh, this and this I saw this or I felt this and she used to always say to me and she's got psychic abilities as well and she used to always say to me don't let people hear you talk this way because they're going to think you're crazy so I had to suppress um, a lot of my experiences from a young age uh, until I think I was around um, like I would still see things but I just wouldn't share it and I would it wasn't until I went to um, a spirit school when I was say 25 26 that I felt comfortable that I found like-minded people and, and things like that. Um, the other thing was in regards to your child, I have two nieces. So one of them is six. And when she was um, a baby, if you used to, if someone else was holding her and you used to put your hands out to her, she would first touch your cheek. And then if that felt good, then she would, then she would come to you. And she had that for maybe the first one or two years um so that that was her and and then growing up she would say like you'd go for a walk with her and then she would stop and she'd pull back and she says there's a little boy there and and he's crying and we're because we're all quite a spiritual family we we would nurture that like I have to admit my nieces they get a lot more nurturing in regards to their spiritual comments and things like that as opposed to what I used to get. So I used to get a lot of, Shh, don't talk like that. You know what people will say. Whereas my mum would tell me, you know, I was walking with the little one the other day and she pulled back and she said, stop, there's, there's a little boy there crying. And she goes, well, why is he crying? See, now I would never get questions like that <laughs> um, to open the conversation. And then she would say, because he's, he misses his mummy. And then later on, we found out that my sister-in-law miscarried and we're thinking, oh, it might have been, I wonder if that was a boy. Um, because the other one, she kept on saying, my brother, my brother. So there was a lot of that. And then my sister's child, who is four, when you were saying that your daughter saw, uh, freaked out with this man, um, I was in a domestic violent relationship up until about two years ago. And he used to threaten me. He used to like push me up against the wall and things like that and threaten to hit me. And my sister's daughter would never go near him. She was, she just, she didn't like him. She wasn't, 
and he's he was always like come here and he was always good with kids but my sister's daughter was no she was totally against him didn't want to have anything to do with him and um and my parents didn't know my family didn't know what I was going through with him and I used to look at that and think wow isn't that fascinating until I built up the courage to eventually to eventually leave him and now that she is older she's four uh she was saying to my sister well my sister was saying mommy's gonna lie down I've got a bit of a headache and she walked over to the couch where my sister was laying she put one hand on her head and one on her chest as if she was doing reiki on her and she goes is that okay mommy you feel better now and then she, my sister was like freaking out thinking whatever you're doing yeah it's working <laughs> so she kind of looked at like she was you, you know the girls are quite well two out of the three are quite um gifted and yeah and I just thought it was quite I could really connect to what you were saying about your daughter and, and that abusive man because I was in that situation with my niece but um yeah so yeah just just interesting just letting you know too that you're not alone <laughs> But it felt good for me too because, yeah, it just kind of, you know, it's nice to know that other people are having these these kind of experiences also. Oh, because you were kind of, I don't think you realised or realised, but up in the shared environment there is a Maginals podcast link and it's called Translating Infinity, which can be found on podcast apps as well. Ashley, if you want to listen to that or anybody else, Ifa. Yeah, before Eileen um, drops out, Eileen, I direct message you. Um, but actually, I really choked up several times when you were talking. I really, really experienced and remembered some of my own experiences. Um, same thing for you, Center. Well, it's a different way of interpreting information. It's I'm going to open it up to the rest of the people that are here just to let you know that it did happen to be a Maginus Charger that had problems and she can't get back in at this present time. But thanked everybody for turning up and also for all the sharing that went on within this. I'm sure obviously we'll be direct messaging her as well, uh, bits and pieces. But if anybody else has got any advice, I haven't got anything that I can think of quickly off the top of my head. But Paul, if you do remember anything, please DM me. I never had time to focus on the question I laid down. Um, so if anyone has any advice, what do I follow? Any lecture, literature, children with gifts, I, which I think is empowered by the traumas that we had to go through. I know in cultures, cultures, there is obviously the trickster and also the shaman. They're normally people who've gone through trauma, and liminal or possibly even classified as schizophrenics or bipolar or any kind of body sh they live in the liminal world they don't live in routine and structure and that's where you kind of see them in kind of like the amazonian cultures and also there are some other places as well which are escaping my mind at the moment which has got that same kind of if you've been through this your brain's altered your chemistry's different and you're picking up more information i think wild eyes would probably be more kind of and again ashley is agreeing on this one i think wild eyes has got some information i think haven't you no i n not at the moment just give me a couple seconds i'm trying to process this mm, well, okay when i mean information i mean experience in your brain not that you'd be able to pick up books or information straight off but it probably resonates a little bit with you in, in what category? I'm sorry. Um... Okay, in the category that most of us live a structured life, as in most people go nine to five and do things like that, where if you're off tilt kilter with either trauma, accidents, other conditions that don't allow you to have normal regular bit, you're in such a liminal state, sometimes strange things happen around you which you haven't got interpretation for. Right. Anyway. Okay, I, I got you now. I just didn't understand the avenue you were going. Okay, yeah, well, it, I think it's, it's down to energy. Yeah. And I'll let... it, I'm sorry? No, it's okay. It's the delay. Always causes <laughs> problems. Once okay. you finish talking, Scented can take over because she's got her hand up. Okay. There are two things here. Energy, surrounding energy, outside and inside. And if you're not balanced, 
if your core with and all of your chakras and I, I would suggest researching that just a little bit in terms of what they all represent. Um, and if it's not balanced, then it's working off each other and it does not, it, it there's, you're unbalanced basically. So it makes it more difficult to navigate through just common household chores sometimes. I mean, I have that situation. If I'm bombarded by a certain type or amount of energy from without at this point, um, then it makes it difficult. I can't really concentrate on, and I want, I'm going to have to divide it into right brain and left brain, okay? On the right brain or the right side or the creative, or if there's a little bit more of an open-mindedness in that sense. So... I'm concentrating on the, you know, the the crown chakra actually, the where the psychic abilities and the energy in my mind is open, okay, which leaves very little to as far as the logical, the rational, the reasonable, in in order to, you know, maintain a thought that makes sense sometimes. So you get bogged down by that side of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, okay. I'll have to agree. It does make sense. Um, I've, in re- I've got a suggestion, uh, Afa, in regards to children who are gifted. Dolores Cannon, she was a, a hypnotherapist, but she used to, uh, she used to work with a, a deeper level of hypnotherapy where she could get in touch with people's past lives and things like that. So all of her books are not based, are not written by her as such tapping into like a psychic realm or anything like that. Her books are written more so by what comes through with her clients in, in her therapy sessions. Uh, And there was a particular point where she had quite a few clients who would speak of a new wave of um, souls, like gifted children that were coming through and that they were going to be a lot more in tune with um, you know, the frequency of the planet and um, they'll be making a lot of changes as well. They'd be quite psychic, very gifted children. And I think she called them indigo children from memory. That was the Um, terminology. I mean, again, that can be taken badly and misconstrued in some places. So it's got to be investigated if if you're going to use it. If if you look into um, Dolores Cannon, and um, I think it's called the, the New Wave, um, but she's got quite a few books out, but if you look into her work, she does, there's a, there is a particular book where she talks about, um, this new wave of, of very gifted souls, one of them, and Ashley's, Ashley's daughter as well. And my nieces. I've put it in my, um, how do you call that? You put a star in the website. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really centered. Now, all That's of you, okay. by the way, wild eyes, I mean. You see, when you talk about psychic or in Holland, they all think in testing, you know, let's put them through this test and that test. So I'm against the wall concerning scientific stuff because they're going to test them. They're going to give it a title and then probably send them to a special school where they will, you know, teach them skills, how to build walls. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they'll, where, put, they'll put him into a box basically. exactly or they're yeah. going to test him more and test him more like they did with me so I need I, I don't know how to get two uh, writers or or um, literature in which I can educate myself to get that balance that Wild Eyes talked about so because he really feeds on my energy so thank you for that. Anything else, please direct message me. I will eat it, read it inside out. Thank you. Not a problem. I will do. Um, on, on that note too, Paul, I've got to get going. Um, but everyone, thank you. All the new listeners that have dropped in, thank you so much for dropping by and all of the regular listeners as well. Um, it's, it's always good to see you. Uh, and, and, yeah, enjoy the rest of your, I think it's evening over there for you still it's 10 o'clock in the morning (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) and uh it's 10 o'clock it's midnight wow um and i've I've got to get going because my day's approaching and there's a lot that i've got a huge day today 
Um, but yeah, it was great to see you all. I love you all. Thank and you. I'm sure we'll Thank see you. you in the next Thank space. you, Stanford. Bye. 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 Have a good see night. See you soon. Or day. <laughs> That's what happens when the Australians have a day. Yeah, it's five o'clock here, so it's it's getting close to night. <laughs> Six o'clock here, and it's starting to get dark. I lost the day. Six o'clock? Where are you, Wild Eyes? I'm in Florida. <laughs> oh, I love these spaces. Oh, my God. Paul, thank I you know, very much. It's a trip, isn't it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, send me some sun. Talking of sunny personalities, here comes the Humanity Hoax. Jamie, good evening. Good evening. No pressure at all on me there with that intro. How are you all doing this evening? Sorry I've missed so much of the, the talk. Well, he really responded to that very quickly. <laughs> Wild Eyes, is he talking? Have I got another issue where I can't hear him? Oh, no. Yes, he is. He just wanted to know how everybody was. Tell him I'm not going to talk to him because I can't hear him. Okay, he's not going to talk to you. <laughs> can you hear? I, can you I, hear him? I, can. I can't hear I can. a word. Okay. That's the no, second I mean, okay. person tonight. Is it me that needs can to you stop? Hear me? He, I can hear you. I can always hear you with phone, without phone, in my ears. It's always good. Who is he? T- who are you talking about? Wild eyes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know who you were talking about. Okay. All right. So I feel like the messenger now. Well, you tell me it's when good. he stops talking at some point or if I'm over talking. Stop talking. Him. I had that wonderful intro and I was waiting for him to bring on his sparkling personality as he does. And I missed the whole gambit because of. No, he, he hasn't Damn started much. yet. Paul, he hasn't started yet. Okay. I know. Oh, <laughs> this is no fun. Well, it is fun for everybody else to hear the climate. Well, okay. So you're not meant to hear it. So n- now Definitely. do you understand how this works? <laughs> oh, yeah. I starting to feel it. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't understand how it's. Two people, two different times. Everybody else can hear. And we're using the same software. I mean, this is just like how you explain to people about being sensitive and hearing voices. They become very selective in in as far as people go, obviously. So I, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. <laughs> See, I can't leave the room and come back in again to reestablish connection. <laughs> it means I can be very rude about Paul and he won't even know what I've said. <laughs> exactly. It'll just cost you a little bit more. That's all. <laughs> Definitely. So, Jamie, if you want to talk, Wild Eyes will tell me when you've finished. I'll um I'll try and reconnect and see if that's if that's the issue. Um, if Wild Eyes, if you can let Paul know, I'll I'll come out, come back in. Okay, it may not be you, but okay. All right, well, Paul, he's he's going to leave and then come back in. Okay. All right. Because I can't I can't even see the little tiny wavy icon at the bottom. With what causes speech. that, do you know? Sorry? What causes that, do you know? I've got no clue. This is the first time it's happened to me tonight. Oh, wow. Greybeard, let's see if I can hear you. Test, test, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. It's great. Let's see if we can get back in with okay. humanity. Hi, can, Give me sound. can you hear me now, Paul? Oh, did a far get knocked out as well? Interesting. Paul, can you hear me? If anyone's talking, I can't hear anything. Hello. How do you know someone's talking? Isn't that the weirdest thing? Well, I see <laughs> there you. must be something. Can you hear me? Yeah, I oh, can hear okay. you. Okay, so it's Paul. I, I had the other day. I had my own space, and you know, everyone could see me and whatever. Use a name for who you oh, can hear. Poor thing. <laughs> Oh, this Affer? Is that how you pronounce it? Eifer, yeah. yes. I can't hear her now. Eifer, Eifer. You can hear her now? No, I can't. Okay. Can you hear Sarah? Oh, Sarah's listener. No, wait, wait, hold on a second. Um, Myro or Miro? Can you say Can you say something? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you well, yeah. Okay. Right, can't it, hear Miro. Greybeard? I can hear you, but Paul can't. Paul, can you hear Miro? I can't hear him at all. I can't hear Miro. How come he can hear you, Wild Eyes? Oh, that's, I heard that's somebody that's else's weird. voice then. Hi, Paul. Ashley, was that yours? Yes. Right, I can hear Ashley. I'll talk to Ashley. Can you somebody hear? Somebody else wants to speak to me. Can you hear me, Paul? I'll guess that's a no. <laughs> Greybeard, come on. You must be still talking to me. Paul, no, can, you... can you hear me, Paul? I can hear you. 
Paul yeah, Casey. I, can, yeah, I, I hear seen... everyone. I see it all. I'm like the all seeing right now. <laughs> well, aren't we shining up our halo? Right. Yeah. Gray beard, can you hear me? your hoax. Come on, Jamie. I want to hear your voice. I, I'm here. You can't hear. Can you see? Well, it might be one for Wild Eyes. But can Paul see the little blue bits next to the where it says speaker that the voices are moving? Or because okay. if he's talking. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. Ah, oh, I can hear people. Oh, that's nice. That's good. That's good. Hopefully, everyone. I can comes. hear Miro. Yeah, it was very interesting. I was I I, I didn't have anything to say, but uh, um, <laughs> I, 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 was I was working. <laughs> but I was listening. I I will listen again. Uh, uh, recording. I I do always, you know, because I miss here and there. I I can pay always attention. I was playing. Deadline is uh-huh. so I was working. So Jamie, does it work now? Oh, I can yes. hear. Yes, there we go. <laughs> takes all the fun out of it when I give you a good build up of going oh here's a sunny personality and then I just hear silence <laughs> it's like normally I can't shut him up what's gone on <laughs> and I'd given such a nice response back and there was silence and everyone didn't it was... <laughs> what happened yes so yeah I, I nobody to, else made it back I had to thank right. you for the the build up and said that there's no pressure now that you've with an intro like that <laughs> um... of course the fact that we happen to know each other, it's okay. It's not a problem. <laughs> do it to somebody who's near, it just causes a problem entirely. Okay, Ashley, I can hear the others. Now it's probably you that I won't be. <laughs> my app, no, I can hear you. My That's... app actually instantly started to update after the space closed down. I went ahead and uh, cleared off my um, app history of what all I had open. Up. I guess I had like five or six apps open at the same time. <laughs> But I cleared it all away. Mine started instantly updating. My Twitter did. So I'm wondering if that's... Yeah, it's good. No, I think tonight has been quite an amazing sharing content from people. Now I've gone deaf again. All right. No. Can you oh, hear okay, me? Okay, right. <laughs> oh, you I'm just want attention, that. Paul. All right, I, I see oh, what's going that's on. I'm, <laughs> oh, that's all. Just imagine me as a cat wanting to be scratched and petted. That's me. That's the attention you're getting on. You don't bite or scratch or anything, do you? Because, you know, when you don't give it attention, then it Take gets Take away my toys. And that's exactly. It. Yeah. Get the little ornery. Yeah. Where, where, where's the little meow? <laughs> don't. There's Avi, who is a friend of Imaginal, who came up and she started purring first off. And oh, I didn't that know one. she knew. <laughs> Um, imaginal, and I thought this is very weird and peculiar as it was going on. Uh, but she comes from Clubhouse, from it seems that Imaginal runs Clubhouse apps and rooms. So, I don't know that name. I, it's, that's interesting. That's the first. It's an app which is basically, if you imagine it like a block of flats, you can go into different rooms without having to be invited. So if you see people in there, you can go and follow in, and they can do the same similar thing as. Twitter Spaces, but Clubhouse was around a lot longer prior to Twitter Space. Oh, okay. I've only heard of um, what's the other one? Is it Parlor? I don't. I remember Parlor got hit, kind of around Periscope. Periscope also. Uh, yeah, because I don't think Periscope. I think Periscope got bought. But... Yeah, well, they all came to Twitter. Yeah. So yeah, interesting how that works. We should have more metaphysical and more um, paranormal. I mean, good paranormal shows. On. Well, people throwing forks in the dark to make people turn around with a camera and go, oh, over there, I heard something. <laughs> there, well, no, I mean, there are, there are um, credible, credible things that are on as far as that, that genre goes. Oh, definitely. You just, you, yeah. You want them to have... 90% of the tra- time, they haven't found anything, but it was quite an interesting event because that's the way that things happen. Not 99% of the time, they find something that happens, and 1% they don't. Yeah, it's bittersweet that way. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sense of a tweet that I've just seen. And there was a guy who, in, I think it was a, a guy called Martin Mushu. 
and he's retweeted the space that we're in that we've created i'm trying to get the tech context of it because i don't know him so he might have been doing this in the correct way he said some of these twitter spaces have people with akashic downloads so then he's used a crying laughing face and then with a flame and then a love heart and then sent the link about this particular room what does the flame represent i've always wanted to know that fire like um it's that's hot that's good like the american lingo uh a lot of people use it as a it's a hot it's a, a hot thing or good thing it, yeah it's a good thing um fire it's a, huh okay yeah. i get it <laughs> You know, you have to, I'm wary of people when, when they say things, I'm, regardless of what they say. I know basically what's right, what, you know, what, what's fact, what's logical fact, and, and what's a hoax, or, you know, what's fake, or their intention as to why they tweeted it in the first place. So I don't let that bother me, because oh, no. I know, yeah, go ahead. It's just, obviously, because I don't know the person, and because emojis can be taken in so many different ways. When he said he was feeling nervous, obviously talking within the environment. Yeah. Okay. Because he doesn't done that before. I think he's doing it with good intention, but I don't. It's just because, obviously, with you lot, I've spoken to most of you, and I'm just trying to see if I can read this one. And so did he? Do that. Go ahead. I was, I was going to say, I don't think I've seen that name in the space, but it could have been before I joined the first time or something. Oh, I saying... remember saying, somebody saying that they were nervous while they were talking. Yeah, because he came in when Greybeard had his hand up, but he started automatically talking and giving advice. And um, and what was the name again? Can you... U-S-H. Okay. Are you? What? As in like the... I don't know. I don't know if I follow. I'm not familiar with it. Um, but I'll look for it. I can re always report back to you, sir. Let you know. <laughs> we don't need to stop. It it's okay. Could have been a spy. You never know. For who? That's what I'd like to know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> I'll never Andy, tell. as you're a first time visitors of this room, because most people seem to have been here for a little while, did you want to say anything? Um, this is actually not my first time coming into, well, a room of yours. Oh, it changed your icon. I'm coming up to be a speaker, though. Have you changed your Just icon? Now? Is that why I don't recognize uh, you? Possibly. I used to have, like, if you look at my icon, like the small bear dreaming, that's what I used to have, and I just changed it to this a few weeks ago. Oh, that's really difficult. Trying to read small <laughs> icons and seeing new banners and quickly do things. Well, welcome. That's exactly Return. why I did it. <laughs> at least you didn't come in here like Jamie did in the previous room. <laughs> I introduced him. I thought he didn't say anything, and it turned out the software glitched out, and I couldn't hear him, but everybody else could hear him. But it happened to me twice. Quite weird, wonderful. Interesting. One of the things that I like joining these spaces for is I just like hearing about all this, like, random, not random, but uh, <laughs> mystical things and whatnot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Get ready to be booted. Um, yes, you were saying. <laughs> oh, jeez. the people now, I would. No, you just want to see what about what the rest of the world and just debate properly. And have actual decent yeah. discussions. Yeah, that's fine. And I think that you do a really good job moderating that and keeping it on track. Oh, so thank you very just, much. Thank you for that. No, feel free. Have I mentioned we have a podcast? Yes, and I've actually heard it before. Not all of it. I keep putting new stuff up. Anyway, yeah, we've also got some new good live events coming up next week as well. So they're mentioned in the links as well. Superb. Sorry, I've been ignoring you artisanal and thank you very much for the message i've just been looking at the laptop trying to check things out at the same time yeah it's this is it's like everybody's been talking about that like yeah more of this metaphysical and more of this and more of that and and, and then it's kind of like because i do talk about the metaphysical and when i do people will say oh i don't believe in that <laughs> or i don't believe in this and it's kind of like you don't believe in breath you don't believe in loving someone that's an exchange of energy it's like wow but um just 
a lot of this stuff, people are going to really be um, starting to question. They're going to, seriously, they're going to start seeking this stuff out in, in different capacities. You know, it's going to, it's just going to open up because the veil has definitely been changing. Grids are, you know, being fortified. Nodes are, and it's, the understanding is upon us. So, I mean, the best thing, I mean, that's a good advice. The best thing I tend to tell. Paul, are you there? Hello. Have we we lost Paul? I heard that noise and it's, I sometimes it's either the, the person speaking or me. That's why my first words are, can anybody hear me? Hello. I, I, can, I can still hear, hear everybody. I think we I, we may have lost Paul. Well, but... that's not good. <laughs> oh, no. His phone's turned. I've just had a message. His phone's turned off. He's rebooting and come back in. So I can okay. let him back in as co-host once he... Um... Wait, but oh, how, right. how did the space... <laughs> how did it stay open? Why, why didn't it yeah. uh, drop uh, everybody? Paul, Paul's See, this co-host. Is, this is how energy works. And it's there's so much creative energy here is yep. the reason why this is happening to all the electronics. Yep. Plus if anybody any of you have any resident spirits like I do on occasion, you can just kiss the whole thing goodbye. Because <laughs> if they're not, you know, they 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 latch on to devices and can suck the battery or do or play with it, manipulate it any way they want. And I know <laughs> I sound really, you know, like nonchalant about it but do any of you guys have issues like my light flickers if my energy changes or something um it it'll flicker and it freaks out my get some of my guests but like the ones that come over often are just like oh ashley you need to calm down or something or (laughs) do you wear a watch ashley i do not okay why is that um I don't like keeping an eye on time, I guess. Uh, the band- I- batteries drain real fast? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's part of it. I have the same problem. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. That's why I have to keep my phone on the charger, especially whenever I'm in this space, because it seems to uh, it seems to drain very fast. It's electricity. When, and, you know, yeah, that's basically what it is. Okay. okay. That makes well, I, more- I don't want to be a, a wet blanket, but I mean... Uh, batteries do just diminish over time. Not in like one day. <laughs> or not so, just during specific time. No, I mean, I mean, if you buy a brand new battery, it yeah, lasts longer yeah. than, than maybe a year later. No, no, I'm telling you. I, I bought brand new batteries and Lit- they just. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, time after time. No, it just. No, I had to stop. And I tried the right hand, the left hand. You know, it just. I changed watches, so I I just gave it up. And you know what? It's okay. I'm I'm existing. You know what I'm saying? It's not really a problem. Oh, hearts! Clock- Electricity that can affect it. There the he clock is. is. Times are, the time is all over the place. You don't need a watch anymore. I know, but I'm just thinking about electricity and hearts. And by the way, when your phone has a turn off point at eleven thirty at night, and you miss it when you're looking at something else, and you've already had a few technical issues, and then you're going. Why has everyone gone quiet? <laughs> it's me that's gone quiet, but lucky enough, the room stayed open with. I made him a co-host, so that was a smart move by me. It definitely was a smart move. You know, that must be an update because in the past, just a few months, maybe weeks ago, if the if the host went down, it didn't matter if you had a co-host. The whole thing was shut down. So maybe that's an update. Oh, yeah. If it is, it's great. I mean, I... Yeah, the Twitter update, really? Okay. I thought back in the day that that was what happened. You could have a co-host in, and if you died, then you could do that. And I did that, and then I lost it entirely. But now this is good. All right. My daughter just walked in with a bowl full of my brownies. (laughs) I'm sorry. I had to say something about that. I got her a little piece of one um, after she got out of the bath, and I guess she liked it so much she went back to the pan and got it looks like the the rest of the pan. (laughs) Smart move. So I'm what did I miss? What? I was saying, did I miss anything? Because obviously you were talking about battery death and oh. not being able to wear electrical watches. Uh, yeah, I can't wear a watch. The battery doesn't last. What about when using 
a nurse's watch. I have never, I, what is that? What's the difference? Okay, so imagine you've got a pocket on your blouse. When you pin it, it hangs down, but the face is inverted so that you just lift it up to look at that. So it's away from your wrists where the electrical discharge issues are. Okay, I can try that. It's been 10 years now. Yeah. Oh, I've been without a watch. Ah, sorry. I just thought you'd pause then. Does it make any difference whether it's your left or right wrist? No, it do, I tried it. I, I tried every different watches, different type of watches. Um, it just, yeah, I tried the left, tried the right. I, I get, you know. Watches? Pardon? Ha Is hang on. Watches? As far as I know, I mean, what other electronic? I haven't tried any of the newer, you know, as far as the, the what do they call them? The fit? The fit fits. Fit bits, yeah. The fit bits, right. yeah. Because people have got I mean, hands up and some people are over talking other people. I think we should keep to a rule of what we normally do. Otherwise, it might feel people feel a bit out of whack from the previous conversations. Okay. No, I mean, finish off about your battery issue. It's okay. While you were gone, we were having the conversation about um, that situation. It was based on... Um, on uh was it ashley in the situation the, the energy, energy. Yeah. and i had asked something about if um anybody else is uh has a, an issue with their lights flickering whenever your your energy changes like in your home or something because mine does it so often sliders like my, yeah how about street regular... lights do you affect street lights Actually, somebody that I, uh, one of my friends that had come over the other night, whenever they asked what's up with my light, they thought it was them because they said that they can't walk down the street without street lights going off or on. Yeah. And I was like, that doesn't happen to me. It, it's, it's just the, you know, it even started at my mom's house. Whenever I'm at my mom's house, if my energy changes, her light started flickering. And she's like, well, that's weird. I guess my light's going out. I said, no, mom, it's, it's me. <laughs> well, you know, there are a couple options there. I, I think that that should be another space, though, in terms of that. Candles. You know what I'm, yeah. I, the other thing, too, as far as your <laughs> the other thing, as far as your house is concerned, sometimes with the EMF readings, there might it might be a little high. And, you know, the, the wiring definitely, and you might experience some things even physically <clears throat> because of that. You could check into that as well. Definitely. So, okay, I'm just going to ask quickly, Jamie, a question. Then I'm going to obviously let Artisanal and Afia talk and that. And then I will definitely, <laughs> I love everyone's company. That's the problem. I start talking. Let's keep going. Yeah, no, I'm happy to do that. Just make sure that we get it all established before anything happens. Jamie, have you had the opportunity to meet artisanal? No. Yeah, we've. I've. 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 I've met. We've met. Been in a couple of your rooms. I think I've pretty much met everyone who's in your room. I think artisanal's been in only in today. In quite a few. Oh, okay. Um, artisanal. I recognise her. I recognise her voice. Okay, maybe you've been <laughs> in the same room. But if right, have you plugged? the other group that you belong to? Uh, no, not today. Right. If anybody wants to do talks about their passions and their hobbies or callings, Jamie belongs to a group called Edgeways, one word, and he'll talk more about it later. And they always like to have people to come along and talk, don't you? Jamie. Yes, sorry, I was just checking. I wasn't on on, on mute. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we we welcome people as because I, I was actually just following um, artisan um, to make sure that I had actually followed people. Um, but we do encourage people to come and talk along their passions, and um, the the group is 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 very much a mix of the the sort of it's, we're quite an eclectic bunch. There's some of us who are interested in ancient archaeology. There's a, um, there's there's spiritual people in the group. So but we we encourage everyone. Everyone's welcome. It's very much a safe space. There's there's any any speaker's never going to get shut down. We we're encouraged. It's it's a it, it, it was set up um, by a friend of mine called Sarah Jane, who 
the idea was to lock down that people could come and talk about the the things that were impassioned and broaden our collective um intellectuality is probably how she'd put it um so there we are we are so we're always interested we're always looking for speakers we've got speakers up until march now um so it's, it's a busy calendar already so far but if people want to come along and talk and let us know and we've had everything from um I can't even how much you call it, but sort of the, the I can't remember how, lady, how the lady phrased it. But we had like the mazes on the ground and, and what the, the, that link to spirituality is. We've had witchcraft. We've had archaeology. We are. It is a very very broad church, so it is, it's not there as a room for for for, for people to to criticise it. So it's there for room for us to very um, similar you know, to the go. way that you would find these rooms that mm. go along. And also, so. they just, I was talking to Artisanal and the rest of the group about, because she goes by so many names, the normal <laughs> lady, as in Bex, yeah, and the hum. Yes. Because there was reference to that this evening within conversations of music hearing and everything else. Sorry for that delay, but Artisan, if you want to say now. Yeah, yeah actually, um, I am called Shadow Fox, and I am an artisan of the spirit. So I'll call you a shadow uh, fox. That's easier for me. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 my sacred name, and um, that's what um, I, I teach under and present under. And it's really funny because when my husband and I um, were actually we were doing a, a class presentation on some very very beautiful energy information, we had hired somebody to come in with. Per, like cameras they had the professional cameras they had like six of them well what ended up happening was every single camera kept going out all the lights kept going out and the 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 his crew kept going around saying we couldn't understand it couldn't understand it it was like even when you go into the bathroom and try to get your hands washed you we couldn't do that because the we couldn't get the buttons it, they just would not, you know, watches, we don't wear them because they don't work. And so I was just saying it was really funny when you guys started talking about that. It it, it was really frustrating because we did the entire class and we had absolutely no footage of it whatsoever. Even Even the cell phones weren't working. So, but anyway, yeah, if, um, I would love to be able, if you're, you know, I, I did follow you. So if, you know, if I can be of assistance in any capacity, I'm up for it. Oh, I'm going to butt in. I'm sorry about this. I apologize. I think for some reason, there's a twitch in my head that makes me want to say this to you. And this is a good reason to twitch. We're going to be doing a topic of head injuries and perceptional change for the good and the bad and how consciousness is done that way. And I think for some reason, you might be able to help out as well. And also, if you do want to be a guest speaker at one of these kind of events, Shadow Fox, feel free to put yourself... I would I would absolutely love to. And quite honestly, you're talking about, and it's so, so strange also, because I have had head injuries. Oh, see, and I so, knew it was a twitch why I needed to talk to you. Yep. That's crazy. Yep, yep. So we're talking synchronicity, and you had made a mention of something about that earlier tonight, and it was like, hmm, but I had been talking a little bit, and I was like, eh, I better not say anything. So, oh, I'm all up for it. I call it. Sorry, Andy? Don't tell me I can't hear Andy now. No, no, you can hear me. I was just reaching for my phone to unmute myself. I was just saying that that's crazy, the synchronicity there. Because I've been speaking to Wild Eyes and I'm speaking to a lot of people. And again, it's the liminal state of trauma that people are sensitive to interpreting information in a different way. And again, IFA is going to be one of those people. And yesterday, actually, there was Kent who was in the room who literally due to cancer, they had to cut his jugular and sort him for six hours on a table and his perception and change and everything else. And when we get to talk to him, because obviously consciousness is the thing that we kind of really talk about. Sometimes I just get this twitch that I need to talk to people for some reason. And uh, 
certain subjects really kind of pull me towards it. And Wild Eyes must be tapping our toes at the moment. Yep. Absolutely. My whole foot. <laughs> so sometime possibly in February, I think we'll just get a round table of people discussing it. And if we know other people who are like that, or even synesthesia people, we'll have those in as well as have that as a topic, because that will be a fascinating one as well. And again, it won't I'm be really judgment. Looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. And I would say also next week, the 18th for us, UK wise, in the link is Myra Dahl, and he had temporal lobe epilepsy since four. He's been guided by an entity that's shown him things, kept him out of danger. He's seen visions within his actual episodes that he's painted. He's got over 5,000 paintings, but I mean, I've done a trailer for it already, but you can find him on his website and everything else that I put up, and it's really worthwhile. So, Shadow Fox, continue with what you were saying. I just had to butt in because obviously I think Jamie will also say that you'll be worthwhile and quite a lot of you will be worthwhile talking to his community. Oh, I would absolutely be honored to do that. And it's this is part of where my journey is and what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. So it's like I love the synchronicity, guys. Really, this is everybody in the room here is the energy is just fantastic and thank you and one other thing i was going to ask you if you've ever done any study or if anyone's ever talked about um some um like near-death experiences or anything like that and the reason why i ask is because all of my life i've never talked about it never yes we have Um, and we've got people who have had those experiences i did a talk on it and i've had loads of accidents throughout my life and when i was doing the research on it some of the things that i've been trying to figure out throughout my life actually fit the 17 different steps of near-death experience but you don't need to be physically dead you can have microseconds of this kind of event and it turns out i've had probably five or six of these easily that I can remember, but they are multiple um, subparts of the category of the 17 within each one of those. So it wasn't just like one element of the 17. I had kind of three or four of them from different points. And it shocked me when I was just doing it as a topic so that we could talk to people because I knew we had people that wanted to talk about near-death experiences and Paranormal Blip, who is a podcaster, he's also been in that scenario as well. And also his parents were paranormal investigators as well, looking into reincarnation and other things. So you're definitely on par for coming to talk to us and talk about those kind of things. Synchronicity. Thank you. And I have really no idea why I even was bringing this stuff up. Seriously, it's not something that I really talk about. It's almost like, you know, what would be the purpose in it? You know, forward movement. I just wasn't really understanding, but here I am and I can only take an action based on that impulse that I'm feeling. So I did so. Awesome. Did you want to ask anything else? Otherwise, I'll let Aifa have a, because I've kept her hand up for a while. Yeah, and you kept ignoring me. I haven't ignored you. I was trying to get back in the room. Then, obviously, I want to make sure that I address the situation to make sure no one was ever talking people with hands up. And get back in the sequence and then get back to yourself. You know what the problem is right now? I'm going to ask a question or, you know, share an anecdote about a subject that was discussed an hour ago, Paul. That's the problem. So I'm just right now thinking... Shall I make the remark or shall I not make the remark? But then again, you guys talked about different stuff, which I also want to say something about. Long story short, I don't know what to do right now. Just I will joking. probably tell you to throw it onto the table. <laughs> okay, about the watches. So, guys, remember, we talked about watches and energy. Um, the weirdest thing from very young age uh, I had allergies metal, uh, silver even gold Um, so I never wore a watch never had the experience but then swatch came by plastic 
I was like, yeah, you know, great. But the moment I put a watch on my wrist, it stops. And I'm not kidding you. And on the day my mom died, a couple of hours before we left the hospital, just to get, you know, relaxed. We hadn't slept like for 48 hours or whatever. So, and I needed a watch. I bought the watch. They put a new battery in it. And by the time we drove to the hospital, my mom had already passed on, which I didn't know. So they were doing CPR and we weren't allowed to enter the uh um the her room and then the news came that she passed on and the moment i looked at my watch i realized it, it again had stopped but calculating back it had stopped exactly the moment my mom passed on it it just but then i put the watch off i took a picture i was like no this this is coincidence I forgot about the watch for a year. A year later, I was like, oh, my God, I still have the watch. And it was working. I put it on, and it stopped again exactly the moment, you know, the time, 9.30 in the morning. Well, or evening, doesn't matter. Ever since I stopped wearing a watch, then I inherited the only thing I took from my mom uh was her watch a very old 50s um they call it vintage a small band it's um metal um you guys might remember it with a metal hook that you know um very small tiny watch brought it to the jewelry polished it up uh new battery you name it the moment i put it on my wrist it stops the moment I put it back on the teddy bear, um, I, I put the watch around his uh, his neck. It works. So I was quite pleased to hear that I'm not going crazy. I really thought that I was going crazy. Nobody believed me that when I put it on, it just stops. So it's the energy. Is that correct? Uh, or the wild eyes. I, I heard you knew something about that. But same thing with my phone. I'm on the second phone right now, Paul, because usually my Android, the way I use it without, I mean, I go into spaces, but when I'm in this space, it just, you know, sh it, it went warm, cut off. So I'm on my old phone right now which is also eating away. Please explain, someone. Okay. Let, let's take the scientific approach, okay? I mean, you know, there could, we could go the other way down the rabbit hole, but I don't want to do that right now. Um, I remember somebody that I met several years ago that had the same problem, and she went to check some things out. She even took a blood test. And there's something in the blood, biologically, chemically that gets in the way of the, le however you want to, because I don't know much about biology, to be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> let's just say that the, the sensors or the neurons, it, it interrupts the signals. It's the best way I can explain it. And also skin resistance of... of whether you sweat too much and also whether your heart produces an abnormal electrical charge. So if you got, say a prolapse valve that can also change the heart right. electrical discharge which also can cause problems we had a family member who did that to their own watches after having that i don't condition. yeah i don't remember if it was a heart issue when it could have been i don't remember hearing any of that but you know what i'm saying it's a possibility oh no but it's just can. one of many one of many kind right. of things that can do it yeah so she couldn't wear a watch either. And I don't know how to go about checking that at this point. I mean, that that would be the direction to go. At least it's it's an avenue to take. How, would, would you rec what would you recommend for that? Or drawing blood and, and seeing if there's any metals or anything in there that would cause it? Sorry, well, that, that was a Put question. The question to... I, I think I missed a question. There's this glitch going 
back and forth. Well, Doc, so, who were you asking? I, well, I was asking you if, since you, ah, you know, right, you, right. yeah, um, I'm just wondering, is that something that you, that should have, she should have blood checked out to see? If you're going scientifically. Um, yeah. You, obviously, right. the first thing would be skin resistance and contact with electrical discharge, because that's how, if okay. you got the back of the metal plate of the watch on you, that's one of the ones that uh, you either prolong the battery for such a long time or you drain it. That's one of the, the resistance bits. The heart one, obviously, you could get checked out with a non-invasive machine, as in they would just put a heart monitor on you to just check, but that's quite further down <laughs> the number of steps. I'm trying to think of in-between ones. Taking blood, I don't know. Jamie, uh, who else is in here is medical? Anyone? Shadow Fox, you might know. Miro, you're normally good on these things. Yeah, there's there's so many different val- variables with mm. this. And like I said, in, it can be something within the physical body. For me, I'm not a huge one that goes and gets everything checked out through medical stuff simply because I can tune in and kind of evaluate and observe my own body um and that it's just it, that's a whole different realm but um if it's something that you're concerned about then you know you obviously can go and get um tested um but as far as like watches stopping and so on and so forth it's more common than people really realize I wouldn't doubt that. But what kind of a doctor would you go to, Paul? Or where would you go? Well, obviously, cardiologist is for the heart. Thinking about skin, I'm just searching now. Miro might have an idea. I was just Googling it. And ah, I, smart man. I find out that some people might have high electricity level or uh-huh. high acidity level. Okay. So these, these two... Uh, you can Google it yourself. You know, I'm not, no, I, you will find it better than I, I will explain. No. Well, did it uh, did it suggest a doctor or or any type of of uh, how to check that out? For I, for... I, I, I didn't go so deep. You know, I just oh, because okay. I have just you say a second within with this form. So I just quickly Google and get some uh, just some a few um, headlines. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I will I myself I will go deeper a little bit later. But that's only why I found that there are physical reasons that you might uh, might do it. Like I said, high acidity level is something with electricity as well. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to start with the science first. Thank you, guys. And about being concerned, I'm not. It's just, you know, the subject popped up and I was like oh okay I have the same thing um but kind of like in the same thing and wherever you go mm-hmm. there's either a clock or you have your you know exactly. your phone your phone you can look so... at your refrigerator your phone your exactly. computer <laughs> you know the dishwasher the you know there's the coffee maker it, it, it used to be a flirting tactic in the 90s. Do you know what time it is? I don't know. What do you guys? I mean, yeah, I'm a 90s teenager. That was how guys used to approach us. Do you have a lighter or do you know what time it is? So yeah, I was always the one that said, I don't have a watch. Sorry, just, you know, popped up. Weird old anecdote. By the way, which is a question I never get to hear. What time is it? Nobody asks what time it is. Anyone? 7 p.m. here in Canada. <laughs> no, no, like in, in, in general, nobody asks each other what time it is. We used to do that a lot. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Now, now it's like a question that died out because everyone knows what time it is. Yeah, everyone has a phone or a watch on. You have one of the gadgets, which is good. And yet, it feels as if time flies. 
it just passes very quickly. And back in the days when we used to ask, what time is it? Because we didn't have a phone or a watch. Time sensed longer. I don't know if it's also something scientific or... Definitely, you want to period. start reading the book. You want to start reading the books, Carlo Rovelli. He's done a very good book on time about four years ago. Uh, could, could you repeat that again? Let me write that down. Carlo Rovelli. I'll just grab the title for you. And make sure I get it correct because it's called The Order of Time. And I will grab the link and post it for I you. I even found it in Dutch. It's really well. Thank you. Okay. So there you go. It's a really good. What Color Ravelli likes to do is you take a concept which is pretty complex, but he wants to put it down into two or three lines of text that anybody would understand. So he boils everything down because he doesn't say, when I went to see a lecture with him talking, he doesn't want to have to wade through pages and pages because he wants everyone to understand what's going on. And he tries to do it in such a way that um, you don't have to spend years studying. And you will find that it's such an easy read of a book. I think it's about 150 pages, give or take, depending on what size the book is. 224. Again, sound of silence, Jamie. By the way, dear space, Paul, co-host, everyone else, autism, wild eyes, yum, long, you know, uh, I'm going to bid you farewell. It's uh, 1 a.m. in the morning in Holland right now, and i got kids, so they get up early. True. Thank you very much for all the time that you spent with us. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, Well, I'll see the, see the invite for the next time. Um Let's stay in touch. Thank you very much, all. Oh, definitely. Register for next week's one because it's a Zoom call and we're doing it by audio, so it'd be good. Awesome. Thank you. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So, yeah, I've got three minutes left before I'm going to do a runner. Well, I'm still here for a while. Um, I've just realised that I was muted when I was trying to talk and add me to myself. <laughs> so I was still here. Did you learn anything? <laughs> Self-editing. Sorry. Excellent. I was, list- I was listening to, to everything, but, but yeah, I'm still here. My mom actually called, um, so I didn't hear any of the last of what was being talked about. And I apologise. <laughs> oh, okay, it's not a problem. I just want to speak to... Let's see, if Jan... I presume it's pronounced Jan... Yes, because obviously he's coming in backwards and forwards and he's a friend of yours, isn't he, Ashley? Mommy. Who is it? <laughs> Jan S, yeah? Oh, yes, I think so. Mommy. Well, since you said yes, he's now <laughs> popped out of the room entirely. <laughs> so whether or not that's intentional <laughs> or just a glitch. Mom. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I I hit follow. I clicked on his thing. Uh, clicked follow. Um, but I think he was following me. So that's fine. The scary man asked him a question and he ran away. Right. I was just going to say <laughs> hello to. Her. I'm Savvy Cat. Mom. It's been glitchy. I did invite my mom though. So um. Oh gosh, Melody. Sorry, she jumped on me. <laughs> I invited my mom though, but so that's why she was calling. We're not going to do the whole four hours again. I'm sorry. I refuse. <laughs> I didn't figure so. Four hours, 56 at the moment, according to the clock. All right. Okay. Mommy, Just why three and a half, right? No, actually, this has been going on for four hours and a half. Oh, well, really four hours, fast? 56, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what happens. That's why the old banner says, if you, have you got five minutes? Time flies when you're having fun, though. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, that's the way it turns out. Jackson, Jackson, I haven't spoken to you in person. I'm, I've seen you come on. Click and go. I bet you Jackson got, yeah, he lost his invite for some reason. 
and sad. He was there because Jamie, I think you gave him the invite, didn't you? Can you repeat that last part? I thought you lost your invite for talking because I was saying to you, I haven't heard from you and I couldn't understand why you weren't responding. Then I realized you haven't got the invite. Oh, yeah. You had sent it earlier and then I just left and came back in. So it was. Ah, that's how you lost it. Right. Okay. I was going to say, normally he talks to me. Why isn't he not talking to me? His icon's here. My speaker keeps going off and on by itself, so I apologize for that. That's okay. You haven't said anything bad about us yet. If you do, we know who said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would never say anything bad. I promise you. Thank you. It's very kind. We don't diss other people in here, which is great. So I have to say thank you very much for turning up and for being such wonderful people. It's great. We've had a fantastic evening. Well, four and a half hours. Oh, should I stay for those two minutes? Make it five. That'd be fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jamie, fill in my time. What have you been up to? Apart from being on mute. Um, apart from being on mute, um, work, I need to get back to starting to read, which I haven't done this year at all. And it's appalled me that I'm two weeks into the year. I've not picked a book up yet. I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. I like to read and I haven't literally have touched nothing. Can I leave that into the podcast? I'll put that <laughs> yeah. as the hook at the beginning. I'm literally ashamed of myself. I've touched nothing. <laughs> as long as it's books. Other than that, like that <laughs> no, no, I was going to leave that out. out. I just context. let people have an imagination. <laughs> Drag them into the four hours. That's what, what, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you got... like, what do you like to read? Um, I'm I'm interested. Um, I I was a philosophy major, and I'm interested in, in ancient archaeology. So, um, I've I've got a whole load of books over Christmas. I've I treated treated myself in December to a whole load of books that are now sat in a pile, and I've opened none of them at the moment. The one that's particularly interesting, you know, um, and it just it just piqued my curiosity was the map of the ancient sea kings by Charles Hapgood, and it's it's old maps that. Uh, which is showing islands or coastline that now doesn't exist and it's whether that was ever just completely fabricated or whether see the the, the coastlines have changed or whether we've lost things I, i've had a fascination with atlantis anyway but the, this book takes it way beyond that and it's it's lots and lots of coastlines showing bits of like antarctica without ice and I bought it, and it is just out of morbid curiosity to have a little bit of a read through something that it might all be rubbish, but there's something there's something about maps that is just a little bit a little bit curious for me. I've always I've always been drawn towards maps, and um and this book was one that I've I've been it's, it's been on my watch list for a long long time, and there's something fascinating about it. So it's sat as that's my coffee table book at the moment that at some time I need to pick up and start reading it. It's right in front of me at the moment. I pick it up as I'm talking to you. And for those who don't know, Charles Hapgood's one of those scientists that um, some people don't call him a scientist, some people do. But um, he would be classed a bit like Graham Hancock as a pseudo scientist. But this particular book, there's just something about it, especially because it's maps. There's just something that piques my interest and has a long time. I've, a friend of mine had it once before. Uh, and well, they still do. And it was a book of theirs that I'd nosed through and picked up and flicked on a couple of pages. And I've, I've, I've always wanted to own it. And over Christmas, I bought it for myself. So now I have a copy of this book. So I'm sure at some point there'll be an Edgeways talk about ancient maps, uh, you know, replugging Edgeways. But for now, the book is, is simply just something that is flicking through my hands that I haven't yet had a chance to absorb yet. I don't know if that answers you. I don't know that, does that answer? That answers what I'm not doing at the moment, uh, Paul, <laughs> as opposed to what I am doing. <laughs> Lucky enough, you've all made that two minutes for me to go flying by wonderfully well. Shadow Fox, sorry, just bouncing in to say goodbye to everybody and thank you very much again. And I will speak to you soon. Well, thanks for hosting tonight, Paul. Uh, ju yeah. Just, just, just the five hours tonight. Thank you. Was... <laughs> just the five. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Good night, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Right. Talk speak to you, to you all soon. soon. Hopefully, I don't close the room. I don't want oh, to do that. Well, <laughs>
Well, 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 if so, bye, everybody, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> if if it crashes, I'll reopen the space. Yeah. To help our research and understanding, leave Perceptions Today's podcast reviews, subscribe to the podcast, along with the other social media accounts, and share. Come and join our live events. That way we can get together and have thoughtful discussions along with advancing our understanding of concepts as we go along.